Howdy, Brian here. Going to uh, make a little video here for you on this uh, Boker Monero. Um, got onto this knife from uh, Carter, and uh, he was really impressed with it on his initial video. And then he made another video where he took the knife apart um, and uh, talked about some other issues in there. The screws aren't hardened. And, the lock face, I guess, is a little steep for guys that know more about this than I do. Y'all, I'm going to have to apologize for you in advance. This Nikon camera I have, it likes to uh, focus when it likes to focus. It's kind of a mess, actually. There, it's focusing on my hand, all right. But it has a tendency to go out of focus pretty easy. So, you'll have to bear with that. Anyway, um, this is a little Boker Monero. It comes, of course, with the Boker warranty card in here. It um, has a lifetime warranty. For those of us who don't like to uh, take our knives apart and screw around with them, as a matter of fact, that will void your warranty. So, um, if you don't want to void your warranty, then you know, send it back to Boker if there's a problem with it. Um, so I'm not planning on taking the screws out of mine um, because of that. I'm not very mechanical minded and I also don't want to avoid my warranty. So uh, I figure if there's any issues and I can send it back to them and they can uh, they can take the screws out of it. And, if they have problems and strip the, strip the screws out, then maybe they'll put heat-treated screws back in it when they put it back together. But it's really their problem since it's under warranty. I think Boker will stand behind this knife, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, this thing has a really stiff detent in mine. I don't like them that stiff because I have short fingers. And, uh, but this one here has a real stiff detent. And uh, let me shine this thing up a little here. So One problem with a blade like this, it reminds me of my ceramic blade. I have on my ceramic knives, you know, they they get dirty so easy that, uh, but anyway, there's there's a look at my Monero. Look at that arrow and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I think the knife is just gorgeous. I think it's beautiful for the money I spent on it. I'm overjoyed with it. Um, it did when I got it. Uh, it did have a small scuff on the blade right here had a little mark it looked like where the tool went off after it got done with the grind and I was going to send it back and I I buffed around with it with a soft cloth and I buffed and buffed and put some oil on it and buffed some more and lo and behold it it's gone so um, so I'm not going to send the knife back after all but it's a uh, beautiful knurled handle there's several videos out here so I'm not going to get overly in depth, but I wanted to show you the, my, my knife and uh, tell you that I'm happy with it. For the money I spent on it, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't have the kind of money to go out and spend six to eight hundred dollars on a custom, uh, or maybe more. I've heard guys spending two thousand, you know, four, whatever. These amounts of money are ungodly that people spend on these knives. and. And I've seen, I started off with the cheaper knives, you know, and I'm slowly working my way up now. <laughs> but it's still a major deal for me to spend $130 on a blade. I've got to really be happy with it. This blade here, to me, is a work of art. Um, anybody who buys a knife like this to go out and open boxes with, or if you're trying to impress a chick, maybe you could cut her sandwich with it. I, 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 that'd be okay, but especially if you get laid. But other than that, you know, this is a piece of art. It's uh, to carry around, maybe to EDC to impress people a little bit, but uh, probably wouldn't use it as a heavy new, you know, heavy use knife. I can go out and spend, you know, I can go out and spend 40 bucks or 50 bucks and get a pretty decent little Spider Co. or cold steel knife that I can use for everyday use. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I do. Let me show you my everyday carry knife. It's uh, around my neck this little Boker Mini Pal. This is the one I used to open boxes with here. And that knife was about 20 bucks. And you know, it's got a little T-handle on it, so 
it's a great slasher. Um, so it also worked good for uh, self-defense use. But uh, the bottom line is uh, this is what I use for EDC. Uh, beautiful knife. I'm just overjoyed with this. I try to get it a little closer so you can see that knurling even better. Um, but I'm, I'm overjoyed with this knife. Um, the other side here has the pocket clip on it. And you can see that arrow shape on the blade, the arrow cut out. But the blade's just, just beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. It's 440C steel. The heat treats everything on these steels. And I think 440C made properly is probably as good as 154CM. But I don't know about that. I'm not that experienced with knives. But I have pretty good confidence as long as it's heat treated properly. Uh, you look at the hard, Rockwell hardnesses on this knife, and it's uh, 57 to 58. Um, so it's, the hardnesses are very similar on Aus 8. A lot of these knives, unless you get up into the vanadium steels, you know, you know, but very few of them get up to 59 or 60 hardness until you get into the real expensive steel, D2 and stuff like that, and you know, whatever. So. But uh, the pocket clip is a little, uh, Carter pointed out the only differences on this knife and uh, I looked at a frame lock video on one. The only differences is the pocket clip is uh, Boker design, Boker, it's a Boker clip. You know, it's, uh, maybe he had something to do with the design, but this knife is almost identical to the custom knife, uh, you know, that costs four, five times this price, six times this price or more. I don't even know what an original like this would cost. It might even be more over a thousand dollars. I don't know, but but uh, this is a pretty good, pretty good facsimile. You know what? And these guys, I've seen a guy that had one like this. It was an original, and he's like looking at this knurling back here, you know, <laughs> and he's saying, "Oh, dude, the knurling and everything on there is all custom made. It's all hand, all hand done, you know." Well, it, you know, that's just great, but uh, I don't have any problem with the CNC lathe making my knurling, as long as it's high quality knurling. You know, I, I can't see, yeah, if you want to have a guy spend six hours doing this by hand, then yeah, you're going to pay $2,000 for this freaking knife, but I don't care if a CNC lathe cuts out my knurling. I don't give a damn. I really don't. But uh, I'm happy with this blade, and I think I'd, I'd recommend it. Like I said, this this is mainly a work of art. It's probably not going to get out of the box that much. It's cheap enough, though. You can carry this knife on, on a limited basis if you want. I don't know, you know, these shiny steels and stuff. You don't have to be careful with the stuff in your pocket, keys and stuff like that. It might scratch it. I don't know. But, you know, I when I carry a knife of this quality, uh, one of my better knives, more expensive knives, um, then I try to make sure I don't have anything in my pocket that's going to damage it. I went out and got one of these Charlie changers. Some dude turned me on to on YouTube. Um, see this? It keeps all your coins in it. It's called a Charlie changer. It's uh, coindispenser.com carries these. And I just slip this because it's, it's plastic. Put my coins in there. It keeps them all nice and you can just dispense your change. But... I, I put it in there with the plastic side facing the knife down in the bottom of my pocket and this is not going to scratch the knife so I don't keep a bunch of loose change and stuff in my pocket that has the knife in it. So anyway, like I said, I'm not going to take this knife apart. If I got a problem, if the lock face is too steep like people are talking about and it gets, it gets a jiggle in there, guess what? I'm going to send it back to Boker and tell him to fix it. And they can change the lock geometry if they have to. I don't give a damn what they do. But with a lifetime warranty, it's kind of their problem, you know. As long as I don't hard use and abuse this knife, they're going to be on the hook. they got to fix it. If something's wrong with it, they'll have to take care of it. So I don't, I'm not too worried about it. Like I say, if something has a lifetime warranty, there's the lock up on mine. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, um, I don't know if you'd call it. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. It really doesn't like to focus up close sometimes. But I don't know if you can see that. There's the geometry on mine. But uh, this is really just just a, a beautiful blade. Let's see if I can get her to focus here. But there's the pocket clip side. 
and uh, there's the other side. But just a just really a gorgeous knife. Um, for the price point, I spent $132 for this at Blade HQ. And that look at that arrow on that blade. Isn't that beautiful? But I think it's just a piece of art. Um, it's well enough made for me. Like I say, I'm not an expert on knives, but I'm not going to hard use this knife. This is really kind of to have for art and to impress people. <laughs> to impress my friends, so to speak. Uh, but it's not going to get any heavy use. Like I said, I might cut a really, if a chick is really good looking and if she's easy, I might cut a sandwich for her with this, but that's about as hard a use as it's going to get. So anyway, that's going to conclude my video on this Boker uh, Salmon Arrow knife. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it, but I'm happy with my example. I, I buffed out the little scuff that was in the blade. It's a little one inch, one inch H scuff right here. 1 8 inch scuff on it. It was right in here in this area and I was able to I was able to buff on it and get it to where um, it came out. So I was able to do that. Uh, <clears throat> there's another guy's video I saw out there and his lock is sticking and I'd be upset with that too. I wouldn't want to put up with that either. Here again, Boker could fix it for you or you know you might just do, I saw, a, I think it was Blade HQ as a matter of fact one of them, maybe it wasn't, there's a couple dealers out there that have videos on this knife. And I can't remember if it was Blade HQ or some other dealer. But he had, his, his, his blade, his uh, lock was sticking. It was stiff. He couldn't get it unlocked or whatever locked. And uh, a graphite number two pencil. Just get in there with some graphite and where that uh, lock meets the blade there. And just get some graphite on that surface and that's going to solve your problem. I saw another guy that was going to, sounded like he was a pretty, you know, avid collector. He had some really expensive stuff. He was going to send his back because the lock was sticking. He couldn't hardly get it to unlock. And yeah, just get a little graphite on that, on that face right there. And, and that will solve the problem. Might even be easier if you just got some, you know, pencil lead without the pencil. I go buy some number two pencil lead and just real gently get that. I don't know where the best place to get that face is. Probably over here somewhere. Yeah, just get in here with the pencil and uh, right in here is where that thing locks up. And uh, put some graphite on that surface and that'll make your lock quit sticking on you. Anyway, that's that's all I've got. I think this is a great knife. I'd highly recommend it. 130 bucks. I think if you hold on to this knife for a year or so, you probably have no trouble getting the retail. It retails for 210 And I do think this knife is going to go up in value over time. Anyway, that's going to conclude my little, uh, my little presentation on the Boker Plus Salmon Arrow. And this is model number 01B0145. Six and a half ounces because of titanium handles. It's all titanium. Um, 440C on the blade, titanium handles, scales, and pocket clip, and uh, six and a half ounces, three and a half inch blade. I don't know what the handle is, probably around four four inches, so um, about seven and a half inches long, I imagine. Anyway, I think it's a great little knife for the money. I'm happy with my purchase, and that's going to conclude my video for this evening. Thank you.